Hi guys, very happy to be here. Um, so we decided to make a project about wildfires. Um, uh, I don't know, maybe if you've been reading the news this summer, wildfires have been having like a massive destructive impact on, on this continent and many others. So, I mean, first to talk about just be a bit more specific, uh, why wildfires? Uh, wildfires not only have a massive public health uh, risk involved with them in the sense that they, they kill people, they kill animals, they destroy property um, and so on. They also have a disastrous environmental impact because of course they cause like massive emissions, methane emissions, CO2 emissions and so on. And further, they, they even have an economic impact because we, we spend a lot of money trying to prevent them. We spend a lot of money, I don't know, hiring firefighters to fight them. So yeah, it's quite obvious why to, why to focus on wildfires. But um, just to, I imagine you were already thinking like, okay, there must be like a very strong correlation between wildfires and climate change. Um, and indeed there is. So not only, just to give you a measure, like wildfires caused over 1.7 billion CO2 emissions last year. That's double the emissions, annual emissions of Germany in one year. So just for the climate change impact, so to speak, but also climate change is fueling wildfires. And so far, it's increasing the length of wildfires by making wildfire seasons like longer and spring starts earlier, summers are drier, longer. Um, also the area, they predict that one increase in Celsius temperature could increase the median area burned in certain types of forests up to 600% in the next years, which is just the same. So yeah, climate change and wildfires are deeply connected. Um, so we decided to narrow our topic down a little bit by focusing on Spain because this year Spain was the country with most wildfires in Europe, or mo the total area burned was the, the highest. Um, nearly 300,000 hectares burned in Spain this summer. Just to imagine that figure, um, that's around three and a half times the size of Berlin. So just to get a, get a grasp of what we're talking about here, it's like it's a lot of area, a lot of fires. And um, yeah, and it's just been increasing over the last decades. It's getting worse and worse. It's not, it's not getting better. And that's what we have to brace ourselves with. Um, yeah, this is a map that shows all the wildfires in the last 22 years. They're not dimensioned by area, so this is just a number. But you can see in the next map, basically, uh, <clears throat> if you add them, yeah, basically, well, it's been had that some wildfire. <laughs> so it's just like all over the place. Um, so, yeah, we decided to narrow it down even further by focusing on one particular region, uh, or like in Spain would say, mm -hmm. uh, autonomous community, which has had some of the largest wildfires in the whole country. It's Castilla Leon. I personally experienced a wildfire there when I was a kid. I don't remember much, but I've come back to that place and the area is still scorched completely in black. And yeah, so also for our data to be distributed a bit more um, homogeneously and to hopefully predict more, um, we focus on this one, this one region. So what is the goal of our, of our undertaking? So we want to create, um, I mean, it's a very humble undertake, undertaking, but we, so we wanted to predict the area or like the extension of the wildfires given like certain data on the fire, also the duration, and um, we also wanted to say something about whether a fire is intentional or not. This is quite interesting because a lot of fires or most fires are intentional. And I don't know if people know this, but they're getting worse and worse, but people are causing them. But it's just the, their intensity, which is really getting worse and worse because of, because of climate change. But um, this could still be interesting for the government, I think, to know. So with the data that we had, we thought that this could be more or less achieved because the data is very complex, as you will see in a, in a second. So just to say something about our data points, and I mean, we have other sources, but like to just mention, mention three important sources of data. And the IMET is the Spanish Meteorology Agency. <clears throat> we managed to like get a lot of climate and geo data through their API and also through the, these two NASA satellites. And the problem is that yeah, that gives us a lot of data on climate and geolocation, but it doesn't give us a lot of data on the fire. And that's the real data we need, like, um, you know, who how was it initiated and so on and so forth. So that data we got through getting in direct contact with MITECO, which is the Ministry for Ecological Transition. And they provide us ample data 
Uh, but it was, you'll hear now about the challenges with this data and all some of the challenges that are coming up. But that's for now. Michelle, please. Yep. Okay, so um, the, in the end, we decided that we will uh, focus um, on um, the data from the government that we received in uh, two large XML files. Uh, the data is on wildfires between 1968 and 2015. Um, and there's a lot of data there, but uh, there, there are also quite a few challenges with this data. Uh, perhaps the most obvious one was that there were, uh, there were a lot of missing values, especially in the uh, older years, uh, and the recording in the data. It's, it only improves uh, in, in the more recent uh, uh, time frame. Uh, and um, we, uh, we wanted to sort of improve the data a little bit and augment it. And um, uh, that's why uh, we, uh, so we improvised a little bit to show you how. Um, and uh, there were also some other challenges with this data. It's, uh, it's of course, uh, this is the geodata, so we uh, had to. Um, have uh, find uh, ways to visualize it, uh, like for example, the data uh, uh, like the visualization you saw with the wildfires, uh, and um, also, um, um, yeah, uh, there was uh, there was some uh, uh, issues related to data leakage, both in time and of course uh, the train does uh, says. So uh, the way we tried to, we tried to augment the data was by. Uh, uh, using uh, perhaps weather data and other geo data, but most of this data is point data. So what we thought of was to create this grid, uh, uh, a vectorized grid, uh, and it was uh, meant to be vectorized because uh, we were not entirely sure how processing intensive this process might be because it could have been quite processing uh, intensive. So uh, we made this vectorized grid that we could adjust uh, the uh, um, resolution on. Um, and uh, later, when we had a, a deeper look at the data, we also realized that uh, actually the, um, the municipalities in Castilla Leon are un unusually or unusually small for, for Spain in any case. So actually the municipalities themselves uh, we could use, let's say, the center of the municipality to predict uh, various data for, this, uh, for the entire municipality. And if you look at the difference between um, like the grid and uh, the municipality, Resolution, uh, it is actually not that much of a difference. So uh, our data was much better suited by using the municipalities, for instance, to, to make the uh, to make the uh, prediction over uh, uh, for the data which we did not have. And then these are the fires you can see and learn um, 2000 to the larger fires only 2000 to 2022. Um, and uh, yeah, we also uh, need to make sure that there is no uh, time leakage because uh, most of the data that was from the government, it was uh, it is done by filling in some forms. And on these forms, uh, there are some variables that you know post factum, so post fire, some that you know before. So of course, if you predict something uh, related to uh, the future evolution of fire, you kind of want to eliminate the variables that uh, uh, that happen. Uh, that can only be collected or assessed after the fire. So anyway, so uh, we uh, uh, started around 100, 110 features, and then we dropped them uh, one by one, one by one, and we got to, I think, 10. Uh, and we uh, tried to predict the total burned area. Uh, eventually, we um, made a classifier. Uh, we um, binned the area by, into five classes initially, uh, less than one hectare, 10 hectares, 50 to 100, more than 200. And on that, uh, we achieved an accuracy of uh, 62%. Uh, if we exclude one of the classes, uh, the, the less than one hectare, like the most noisy one, um, then we get a bit of higher accuracy uh, at one score. And uh, we can see also like the most uh, um, relevant features. Uh, these are related uh, uh, to a large extent, mostly to the um, location. Uh, so these first three, one, uh, uh, the first three and the province, they are related to location. Then uh, uh, there are some weather uh, features, and the interesting thing is on ID plus day, it refers to a characteristic of a day, if it's a festive day or not, a festive day or a weekend. Apparently, this also makes a difference in, like, in uh, how long the fire lasts. Uh, and we also did the same for the duration. Um, uh, we've been a bit different, less than an hour, six hours, 24. 
34 plus, and these were the scores uh, and the features they have very similar, uh, actually, uh, like the most important features for the model, they are quite similar between the two measures, which is quite expected because the, we'd expect that lo longer fires produce a larger, uh, larger damage. So the two variables, the prediction of the two variables, um, yeah, you'd expect similar factors to be the most important. And also, of course, we did not predict the uh, integration from the surface and so on. And the second model is if the fire is initiated by uh, is, is the cause of the fire, if it is initial or not initial, and we have the causes in the data set for our desires. So we could uh, distinguish between initially, that is the 400, they are almost half of the fires. And other cases which are unintentional, uh, all that is intentional fires, all others are unintentional fires, and our model tries to predict uh, if the fire is intentional or unintentional. Okay. And uh, that's the result of our model. We have the confusion matrix here, which gives us the two positives, two negatives, the false positives, and false negatives, and we can. Uh, Regulate with this the accuracy of the model, the precision, the recall, and the F1 score. And the, the result is yeah, accuracy is 72.7% that we predict the, the right cost for the fire. And the yeah, precision recall, the F1 score is all comparable to model A we had before. And yeah, we fully didn't much to change on the models, they are quite similar. So we would uh, almost make any prediction with this unintuitive classifiers. And uh, as to, yeah, yeah we, tried, we tried every classifier model. Uh, but uh, random forwards are the best ones. <laughs> Sorry for the only chaos here. So, I mean, just as a recap, so uh, it was not a great, I mean, you know, our data, wildfire data is so complex. It's uh, because we got this government data, it's, it was missing so many values. And there might be so many informative values that the government's already using for their machine learning models on, on, on wildfire prediction, which we have. There's ample literature on this, but we don't, we don't have access to this. Um, but I think if we continue down this road, we could get more, more interesting results with more time and more data, and maybe also crossing socioeconomic data with fire data or socioeconomic data with climate data and fire data in, I don't know, maybe neural networks with satellite images, who knows, but uh, it's clearly like a really hot topic at the moment. There is a, There are a lot of machine learning publications on this and we were very, very happy to work on it. I just hope that you didn't feel the results uh, of these three small predictors <clears throat> was not dissatisfying, but uh, yeah, we, we hope to have the opportunity to continue working on this and we Really thank you for your patience. <laughs>